did a thing again. Don't even have my other 188 installed in the Pinto, and I went and got another one. Couldn't pass up on the deal. This one is claimed to be froze up from sitting too long, but it was cheap. And I should be able to make some good money parting out the Mercruiser stuff, so that'll all be put to the Pinto. But otherwise, it's kind of dirty and old, but it's a 302. got the engine home we're gonna see how actually locked up it is I got my wrench on here I can hold this still long enough to let's go up a little more put this tire Just tighten the bolt so yeah it's got to come apart there's a pine tree branch in the intake that I tried to grab and it fell inside so I see pine needles all over this and it didn't come with a carburetor so there's probably stuff inside in there all right well I got my cruiser number two off of the trailer got my hoist off the trailer um, run into issues with this hoist setup with these freaking L brackets you can only really get it to reach these bolt holes here which causes issues with the firewall of can't do shit right there <clears throat> So I think I have to buy a motor plate. Um, mount on the carburetor flange. Not a big fan of doing that with an aluminum intake. Um, but we're, we're just gonna do that to help position the engine in the engine bay. So I think it'll be okay. Um, I was messing around with this tire changing tool um, on the flywheel here, trying to get a good bite on it to see if I could get it to turn over. She ain't turning over. <laughs> this was bending. So I put some, I think I put PB Blaster in the cylinders. I don't remember. But... I'm sure that these uh, these valves are probably stuck. It's pretty crusty. Push rods are definitely crusty. So it's got to come apart. Uh, <laughs> probably going to be a winter project. So. Thought I'd have more room in my garage putting the engine in the Pinto, but things just aren't working out that way. So, I got one of these freaking sets of motor mounts 
uh, for sale on eBay, but I think I'm going to keep these. I'm going to keep the bell housing. And we're going to make an engine run stand out of that. So, I think that'll be interesting. Well, I managed to get the intake off of my cruiser number two. Serial number something 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 five zero six zero. Um, it's pretty crusty. Got one stud that's stuck in here. Um, I tried using the putty knife here to break that china wall um, but eventually I ended up taking my tire changing tool and getting underneath the water uh, neck pry it up like that and it popped right off the gasket was holding on it's really kind of damp yet See how the cam looks. Can't really tell too well. It's a shame that all this water got in here. Well, I suppose we can take the heads off next. All right, we got driver's side head off. Valve stuck open. And we got all kinds of stuff growing in here. This thing must have lived underwater for a while. It's like some kind of putty rust material going on. Pretty nasty. Definitely gonna have to be bored out if it's any good. Yep, let's take the next one off. All right, well, we got the other head off. Pretty much rusty on the side. A little nice deposit there and there. And oh my lord, what happened here? My guess, probably froze. Yep, she junk. She junk. So I guess we start stripping off anything that looks like it could be useful. Kind of figured, point at my hand, kind of figured that I would be buying this engine for the heads. So hopefully them are good. So we'll have heads. I could probably save this Mercruiser timing cover, or timing whatever. Um, but yeah, I think the crank is probably bad because of the rust in the area down there. But we'll take it out and see what's going on. It's a shame. Kind of figured something was going on when all these frost plugs are pulled out. And I spent less than a hundred dollars on this thing, so it's a good deal if I can get a good set of 351 heads. Hopefully. Well, we got the timing cover off. Balancer, timing cover. Got the chain on the cam, pretty, pretty floppy. Looks like a nylon gear. That's not a good sign. I bet you my other one has that on there too. So we probably should change that. 
Let's try and get the cam out. I suppose we'll have to pull all these lifters out first. Hopefully they come out. All right, well, it's getting dark out. They all seem to be stuck. It's prying on here with a screwdriver on this one. Actually on the first one too, and the little retainer clips popped out. Um, this one did start to move. So I don't know if they make, do they make a puller for that? I have a slide hammer, but I don't know what, what can you get in there with to grab onto that. Maybe some kind of collet or something. But <clears throat> I kind of want to see what that cam is like. But it's getting dark and we're going to wrap it up. Put anything away that we don't care about that we do care about rusting anymore <laughs> uh, but this is going to be one heck of a load to the freaking junkyard trade it in for good parts well we got Mer cruiser number two one bank of cylinders soaking that's uh, white vinegar it's freaking bubbling yet. So, we gotta find a way to get them pistons out of there. So we get the crankshaft out and the cam and stuff. Trusty mess. All right, we got this side flipped over, drained out. Hit it with some PB Blaster. Uh, cylinder walls are pretty, pretty rough. But hopefully we can drive the pistons out. So we got what's left of my vinegar in here. We didn't put any in. The one with the massive hole in it. think we're gonna get that one out that way anyhow but I hit it with some PB blaster just in case hoping we can get all of them out except for that one maybe or most of them and still get the crank out I don't know it'd be cool if I could save some of these pistons for spares